Uh, you gotta try and wake him up, keep him up, have someone grab him something to eat, some water. Uh, that don't open up a little. That when you take him. And uh, with the Good Samaritan Act, uh, if all five people can, if all five people can prove that they were, uh, they were actually help to seek medical attention. They weren't just there to get out of it. Then all up to five underage kids potentially can be uh, waived out of being arrested for underage minor. Um, one thing that I really, I'm pretty sure everybody here noticed was that uh, Jim, I believe it was, he, he called, he called uh, Pete his friend, but at the same time, he wasn't really thinking about Pete. He was thinking, oh, Pete's got himself. I don't need to worry about him, whatever. And he seemed to not care about hearing anything else. He was just there to drink until whenever and have his kind of fun even at the expense of his girlfriend's fun pete's fun and almost everybody else anybody else at the party's fun putting someone like pete at risk of like you know yeah it seemed like to him it was all about him it they're fine they're fine they're fine i don't need to worry about them i just worry about myself i worry about you know that's a, that's the kind of guy jim's character seemed to be and I mean, personally, I didn't really like the point where he, and I don't know how many people remember this part or really noticed it too much, is like when Aunt, um, what, what was the girl's name again? Anne? Anna. When she was trying to um, tell him that Pete had said he thinks he had enough or he, he wasn't feeling so good or whatever it was first time, uh, Jim basically darn near got in her face seemed telling her don't worry about it like whatever and she seemed real timid yeah he seen so obviously he's the uh, authoritative one in the relationship and that definitely doesn't help whenever there are those there are those people that think that way at a party it seems like they either challenge someone to go way beyond their limit like he did with Pete and don't think anything of it or they just kind of ruin the party for others. So one lesson there is try not, I would imagine. All right, so we have to move on. Uh, the next scene, you're going to meet two new students, totally different people. You're going to meet Tom, uh, you're going to meet, no, Nick and Jessica. Uh, Nick and Jessica are at that same party, and the chair in the middle of the stage is the keg. Hey, yo, Perk. Gently remove your tampon and get a real man drink. Put that pussy thing down. Yeah, that white, no, we don't do white cloth here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, sweet. Hey, Perk, can you get one of those very freshmen to come pump this thing? I mean, isn't that why they're here? I, oh, I don't know. Phone. He could be literally anywhere. He's like Harry Potter. Yo. He can... Nick, shut up. I can't believe you're here. I can't believe you're here. Shut up. You do not remember me. No, I remember you. No, you don't. We have class. Class. On Thursday morning. That's right. Class is hard. <laughs> I know. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, wait. This party is so great. I love <laughs> these decorations. 
Lots of purple, lots of gold. It is Mardi Gras. I know, let the good times roll. Ooh. It looks like you've been having a good time. <laughs> How'd you get all these beads? <laughs> you know how I got them. Were you out on the balcony? No, but I wanted to go out there. <gasps> what did you say your name was again? I'm Jessica. Well, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you here with? <laughs> I'm here by myself. I mean, I'm not, I'm not here by myself. I, I'm standing here by myself. I, I'm, I came here with my friend, a, a girlfriend, Harry. But now I'm standing here with you. Oh, so you're Carrie's friend. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know Carrie? <laughs> That's what everybody knows Carrie. She is not a slut. She's totally a slut. <laughs> so, you said you want to go up to the balcony? Let's go. I can get you some more beans. Hey, uh, what's your major? Uh, I'm undeclared. What? But you're a junior. <laughs> hey, why is that funny? It's not. It's not fun. It is. It is. It's really, um, um blah, 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 shut up. It's all right. I'm just kidding. Oh, okay, good. Good. <laughs> so you said you want to go up to the balcony? Let's go. It's right through my room. Let's stay here. But we can't get any beads down here. Besides, it's quiet up there. We can talk, get to know each other a little better. <laughs> You're kind of cute. And do you like pool? Because we got pool. A pool? Pool table. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie won't know where I am. We can have so much more fun without all those. But if it'll make you feel better, we can stop and look for on the way up. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, look, there she is. Uh, yo, Carrie. Yo, you big hoe. <laughs> yeah, you know who I'm talking about. I'm just going to uh, take uh, um, Jessica. Yeah, I was going to say Jessica <laughs> up to the balcony for some more beads. But it's all good. I'm not going to flash. We could do whatever you want. We're just going upstairs to throw some beads. Be cool, whatever. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, what did you say your major was? Again? I'm pre-med. Oh, I do some. <laughs> Shut up! What's your major? Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't go anywhere, dude. I have five minutes. Five minutes. No. Come on back, Jessica. Come back here. Let's talk. Hi. Hi. How are uh, you? Jessica, grab a chair. Yo, Nick, grab Bert, a chair. Who is this old dude at this party? <laughs> Don't worry about it. What's oh. up? Oh, How you doing, Nick? Well, I'm feeling a little blue. Feeling a little blue. All right. Are you drunk? Nope. No? No? How much have you had to drink? A couple of beers. A couple of beers. How long have you been drinking? Uh, we tapped the first keg at like... Noon? Yeah. So you've been drinking all day long. Yeah. But you're not drunk. No. How about you, Jessica? Are you drunk? Oh, she had the shot at the door. Yeah, I did have the shot at the door. What, what was, was really that? Good. What was the shot at the door? Oh, it was right. sparkly. I've never seen a shot that was sparkly before. Why did you get a shot at the door? I'm a VIP. You're a VIP. What can I say? Okay. What do you guys think? What do you want to know? What do you want to say? Questions, thoughts, comments for Nick or Jessica. What do you think? That's right. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> Nick, what are you planning to do with Jessica up on the balcony? Whatever she There's wants. There's beads what, up uh, there. What's that? What's that mean? What? What? What's your uh, uh, what's your intentions? You asked what that means. Oh, I, whatever. What? What? what, what, what? Play school. I can do pool tricks. I'll talk a cues. Track balls. Oh, <laughs> well, you got some pretty strong innuendos there. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? You got some pretty strong innuendos there. What? I'm just so cool. What, what, what is your intentions? Whatever. What? I mean, if you wanted to hook up, I'd be down to hook up, but. But she doesn't want to. 
You said that. Didn't you? you didn't. You didn't ask well, me. I mean, if she wants to hook up there, like, hook up. You, you do realize that uh, she can't give consent, right? What? She can't give consent. Okay, Mr. Officer. <laughs> Dude, what? How did you get into the party? Because I don't even know what you're talking about, right? I, I mean, he like considered rape. Whoa! whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, if, we if haven't things even were... done anything, and you jumped to that. I mean, we're not those kind of guys. Like that's not how we. Nothing to say. I'll take it. Pass it down. Pass it down. Awkward. I don't know. I thought we were gonna go talk or, I, you know, play pool or maybe hook up. Jessica, that shot that you took at the door. What all was in it? What? What all was in that shot that you took at the door? It was sparkly. It was so I cute. I can tell you because I made them. It was uh, yeah, but I made the shot. I know what you're trying to say. These guys are not like that. They're like nice guys. Harry has vetted all of these guys. I mean, my sister was at a party with a nice guy, and they slipped something in her drink. Hey, I'm, I'm so, sorry that happened, but, like, I'm not that guy. I'm, what kind of thing are you talking about? My sister was roofied. Yeah. Yeah, do I don't think here. they do. Harry vetted all, like the VIP list. We are not gonna. We're VIPs. Who are Rufia? How right? many? How many of those VIPs were other female? What? How many of the other VIPs were female? Female. Oh, I'm all of them. Why would Harry bring the top class? Of the VIP and the top. So those VIPs, would they then be rated tens on the list? I think I'm a ten. Oh, ten. What about the other females? They're all tens. Gary says they're VIPs. They're VIPs. So then that would be a list that other guys would want to roofie, right? They Whoa, want to hook dude, up we with. We don't invite. Okay, so what's your miss? This house? All of them? Don't do that. It's that social lubricant. You know, it's like, it's to loosen everyone up and, like, let them have a good time. Like, that's all we're trying to do. I mean, it was kind of nice. I was like, yay, free alcohol. That's insane. Oh, Jessica, I want to know, though. So you, you talked about what you thought was going to happen upstairs, and you said maybe hook up. Uh, but it was very clear that you didn't want to go upstairs. And then it was only after Nick sort of encouraged and encouraged and encouraged that you made the choice to go. I mean. So did you want to go or not? I don't know. It's, I, didn't want to, I didn't really want to say no, and I didn't really want to say yes. Either. I don't know. I I really wanted to hang out with Nick. So Okay, but you 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 didn't want to go upstairs, but you did want to go ups I'm I'm I unclear. It's a, I don't know how, I didn't really know how to how to put I, I didn't really want to be like, No, I don't wanna go, you know, I I didn't know how to say like keep him hanging with me you know. I wanted to hang out with Nick, so I, I don't know. Okay. What do you guys think? Coming over there. Told you I'm gonna get a work done. <laughs> well, there's no difference than hanging out. There's no difference in hanging out with everyone downstairs than you two going upstairs alone. I mean, like the way he was. You I can know, still like, both have fun and hang out downstairs well, instead yeah, of going but upstairs. Yeah, she said she wanted to go up to the balcony. Yeah, I mean, it's how because he kept insane. pushing her. Huh? He kept pushing her to say yes. Said that wanted to go. Yeah, I but he kept to saying her to her to come on. If you said it once or twice, I said to let her have her choice. What I mean, wants. like, what do you want to do? Me? Yeah. I don't know. I wanted to hang.
hang out with I came to meet Nick. Yeah, you can still meet him, but I think I don't know, you can maybe still hang out I'd with like, him and talk to him. We could go upstairs and like talk and it sounded like it'd be nice like quieter up there. Like the way he was talking about it. Like maybe we maybe we'd hook up. I don't know. Do you I don't know, hook up means a lot of things. I mean I don't I don't wanna have sex, but like I I don't know, hook up means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Kind of Nick, what is your version of a hookup though? Because her is is a makeout, but what's your version of a hookup? To hook up. Which is hook up. But is it more than what she wants than just making out? Oh no, we would do whatever she wanted. Like women have all the power. Like nobody's gonna get laid if. Like, but you kept pushing her earlier. So what wait, makes well, you think you not, that you, she said she wanted to go up? So I was like, hey. I know she how said to get no up several there. times. So what makes so when I would doesn't that mean you would also push her more during? Oh no! Oh, no. I'm not that kind of. Whatever we literally, if she wanted to just talk, we talk. I'm whatever. I still want to know though. When you say hook up, what do you mean? Does it mean having sex? I That's mean. Kind of- Hook up. It's kind of like hook up can mean like a lot of different things. It's kind of nice that it's kind of ambiguous. Like, I don't want people to think that I'm going upstairs to have sex, but like, I don't want people to think that I'm like a total prude either. Like, okay, Nick, I, going off that, you keep looking off to your guys over there. It seems like you want them to know if you're going upstairs and having sex. I, I mean, yeah, I, like, I kind of want to know that. Oh, maybe hook up or whatever happened, no? So the thing is, is that... Jessica. Jessica. So Jessica, Jessica in the beginning, did not want to go upstairs. You kept forcing her into Whoa. making the... No, nope, no, nope, let me finish. She wanted to go upstairs first. I mean, I, I was, was kind of unsure, you know, like... But, like, at the end, I, it sounded like it might be fun. You say you want to go upstairs to hang out because you know Nick, whatever. But Nick kept forcing you to get into the decision Whoa. of going upstairs. <laughs> Did I say, and hey, you need to go upstairs right now. Definitely. Nick's, Nick does oh. not have the pure, purest of intentions with you. <gasps> And even if you even if you guys were to go upstairs and quote unquote hook up, wait, hold on. You have alcohol in your system. You cannot give proper consent. And if you were to have sex, she said she didn't want to have sex. If you were to have sex and wake up the next morning and figure out what happened. You could go down to the police department okay, and wait, get in for rape because it is not like, it is not proper consent right with alcohol weird. in the system. That'd be super whack. The Wizard of Oz. I know, yeah. like you know what my intention. Is. I don't know how, but dude, I'm <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, yeah, going off of your intentions, what exactly? Like you've been asked, what exactly was your intentions? Because you say going up to the balcony to hand out beads. Oh, it's whatever she wanted. I got like six dads out or there. Or play, <laughs> even play pool. Dads. But your actual intentions, what were they? I mean, whatever she wants. Like, I'm dear, like, whatever she wants. This is so awkward. Yeah, like, this is supposed to be a party. We're supposed to be having a good time, and I feel like there's a weird vibe. Yeah. No? Right. I'm just saying, we just... Is, is your definition of a good time scoring on random girls you just met? Scoring. I mean, you, you literally just met her, and you were, uh, you're, yeah. Well, I we mean, have class. We have class. I just, you know, it was like it had come back. You like, didn't even slowly, remember her. Sure. What? You didn't even remember her. I, dude, ha- okay, who let you into the party? Because I've been drinking, and, huh? 
Jessica. Yeah, oh, you thought you were about to get me, Father Time. I'm watching you. <laughs> Nick, you said women have all the power. What do you mean by that? Like, no dude can do anything if a woman says no. So it's like, whatever she says, go. Whoa, whoa, wait, that's weird. Why is that? Huh? I'm a little on your side. Everyone pack. Problem is, the both of you are drunk, and you yeah. cannot give consent to actually have sex with her either. I don't want to. So have nobody sex. can oh, actually be in the wrong for rape because neither one of you can actually give consent. Like, hold on, I have a question. Or up, both Jessica? of them can be in the wrong. <laughs> what are you supposed to do at a party? Uh, so, guys, what's going to happen now? I don't know. Let's go play some pool. We're about to go play some pool. Let's All right. Play. Have fun. Enjoy the party. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to go off the first part of what you said, and that everybody was coming down on Nick, and just put, uh, pose a problematizing question. So really all we saw here was Nick trying to hook up. And hooking up happens at parties. Let's face it, it does. Drinking happens at parties. It does. Drunk hookups happen at parties. But for a lot of you, this seemed to be a problematic situation. So the question is, why? Why was this a problematic situation? What was problematic about it? The problem being that Jessica said that since she's a VIP, she had to down a sparkly shot. Every VIP, every VIP on that list was a female. Well, if every VIP had to down that special shot, how we know? Uh, how we know there's nothing illegal in there? No uh, roofie in that in that certain drink. Well, we're talking about roofies, which is certainly a possibility and a problematic possibility, but uh, what about alcohol by itself? Is that a so-called date rape drug? Or can it be? All right. Somebody else, why, why, if you found this situation problematic, why was it problematic? There are several reasons. One, as multiple people have stated, she and him were both drunk, so neither of them could give proper consent. So, in either case, check rape. Now, going beyond that, there was, as a few people said as well, the fact that he was kind of forced, pushing, talking her into going upstairs into his room. I'm sure there was another way to the balcony without going to his room. And if there was not, little bit yeah a little bit of peer pressure because obviously she was kind of into him but she wasn't maybe getting together or maybe but certainly not going up to his room and as he ended up stating during one of the back here's questions he his intention gets fed that was clear enough and then he tried to backpedal and say well it's her choice that that is something a lot of they they want to push the claim and result like if you hadn't chose you can't make a but Uh, I didn't want to go upstairs, but I wanted to be with Nick, and I didn't want him to think I was a dork, whatever. Is that kind of social pressure uh, relevant in situations like this? How does that play out? What do, you, what do you do with that? Anybody? What do you do with that? 
you end up doing something you don't want to do just to fit in. And maybe she didn't want to do that, but she wanted people to think that she was cool because she had sex with him. And she shouldn't have done that. But she said she also didn't want them to think she was a prude. That alcohol also lowers your... Alcohol makes it easier for to do for you to do things that you might not otherwise have done. Is that what you mean? Lowers your inhibition. Uh, if some of you saw this situation happening at a party, how many of you would step in? Okay. If you did step in, what would that look like? What would you do? Somebody. I would have. I would have confronted Nick first off, and said that, told him that, I would have let both of them know that what Nick's in, intentions are is not not legal, not right, because there's no, con, no ability for them to give consent, and just, it's hard to, a lot of things that how things could go, but but I I interact, I get in the middle, and I'd intervene, I'd talk to him and and keep them separated. I talk well, once it's separate them I'd separate them. I talk to I confront Ooh. Nick. I'd say, hey, you do not need to be treating a woman like that, no matter if you're drunk or not. You don't. You just don't treat women like that. You don't treat anybody like that. And you guys, you you think it's cool to go party? Think this is all fun? But there are consequences for the actions that you're taking. Both of them, even no matter if it's legal or not, I mean they're both intoxicated. They both can't give consent, even if they wouldn't get any legal consequences. They still are in the wrong. And. I, I mean, the best thing is to intervene and not just not let that stuff happen. I mean, stuff like that, it can't be let, go, let you know, can't be allowed, can't be tolerated. No toleration for anything like that. Exactly, step in, take any action you can. If he gets hostile or something like that, you do everything you can to protect her and her safety and other people's safety. I was going to say that I would probably try to get Jessica um, to go home, maybe. She seemed already drunk. Uh, she shouldn't have taken that shot at the door. And as even if I was just an acquaintance of hers, even if I didn't know her at all, I'd probably um, pretend to be a friend of hers if she was uncomfortable in that situation. And I would try to convince her to maybe head back to the main area, go find some of her other friends to hang out with, or maybe even go home. So you could confront either Nick or Jessica to break the situation up. All right, I just want to throw out one thing. We talked about alcohol. Alcohol is a huge factor here. Uh, we go to campuses all over the country. And I talk to a lot of staff on campuses, and I don't believe I have ever talked to a, a staff on campus dealing with a sexual assault that did not involve alcohol. It's not to say it has to, certainly, uh, but just to say that it is a huge factor. Uh, we have one more scene to show you. This, you're gonna meet two brand new students again, Tom and Nicole. They're coming home from that same party to Nicole's place. <laughs> and I just want to throw out there that this scene can be intense, uh, can uh, evoke some really strong emotional reactions. Uh, if you feel you need to get up, please take care of yourself. <laughs> Come on. And then I knew he was going to fall off the table. It didn't help that his pants were around his knees. Did you see those SpongeBob boxes? If I ever do anything like that, take me home. I don't know. I might just take pictures. Oh, that's good to know. So it's good to have a little, some, something to blackmail you with.
I'll watch my step around. That'd be wise. So, what do you think of my friend? Oh my god. Oh, what do you mean, oh my god? I just didn't know you had friends like that. <laughs> a little crazy, more than I expected. Well, we know how to let our hair down and have a good time. I'm really tired. <laughs> I don't feel like driving home. I don't really want you to drive home. Where's your roommate? She's at her parents for the weekend. Oh, we have the place to ourselves? All to ourselves. <laughs> Let's watch Gilmore Girls. I'm so, what? Part of being in a relationship with me means lots of Gilmore Girls time. Well, I can think of more fun things to do. I thought you were tired. I'm not that tired. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Fast Pants, I'm not in that kind of mood. What's different from the last time? Nothing. We just don't have to have sex every time we're together. Can't we just be near each other? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Come on. What's wrong? Nothing. I just don't feel like doing that tonight. Let let's watch a movie. Yo, was I a jerk at the party? You are a total dick. <laughs> no, look, it's not funny. I, I was joking. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just go home. Hey, hey. And maybe I'll just go home where I have my own toothbrush and... Hey, didn't do anything wrong. You know, it doesn't really seem like you're interested in... No, but I am interested in this. Tom, Tom, I said I don't want to. Stop it! Stop. Tom, have a seat. Tom, have a seat for me. Hand me this sweater. Tom, what just happened? Um, uh, I don't know. We were at this party. And no, I mean, like right now, what just happened? Um, uh, we were having sex. Freaked out. You were having sex and she freaked out. Is that what happened, Nicole? Can you say what happened? No. All right, Tom, you were at a party. Take me back. How did we get here? Uh, yeah, we, um, I don't know, we've been going out for a couple of weeks, and uh, she invited me to go to this party with her friends. I never met them before, and, um, you know, her friends were kind of crazy, and I don't know, it was kind of fun, and... We were dancing, you know, really, really dancing, grinding up on me. Um, and then we left the party, and she asked me to walk her home, and I walked her home, and she invited me up to her apartment, and so I came up. And, um, you know, she, she wanted me to stay, and, you know, we were kissing, and she took off her sweater, and... Um, yeah, I don't know, and we just, we were having sex, and then, I don't know, she freaked out. That sound right, Nicole? No. What happened? He, he's right, we were, we were having this fun time with my friends, and I don't know, I, I thought it'd be nice, because I knew my roommate wasn't around, if we could spend, spend the weekend together, so he... He walked me home, and it was kind of chilly, so I had my sweater on, and we came back, and I wanted to watch a movie or something, and he, he, he kept going, 
have sex and I told him I didn't want to and then and then he tried to leave and I don't know and then we started kissing again and then he he shoved me down and started taking my clothes off and and having sex with me and I, I just kind of froze. I don't know. I just left, left myself for a while. And I don't know. Then I came back to myself and, and, I, and I pushed him off. Okay. Is that right, Tom? All right. What do you guys think? What do you want to say? What do you want to know? Questions, thoughts, comments for Tom or Nicole? Uh, what, Tom? Tom? Uh, I'm going to side with mo the majority of people here. You should have stopped when you had the chance. But I am going to play devil's advocate with you. From my point of view, she was also giving mixed signals with, don't go, I'm, I'm wanting this. But she was also not wanting it at the same time. And you being drunk, knowing how college guys are, you couldn't really control yourself. But at the same time, you should have been able to. What were the mixed signals? He said no. You kept telling him no, but then when he tried to leave, you got really, really close to him, and you started kissing him again. You were pulling him closer to the couch to sit back down. I didn't want my boyfriend to leave when we had, like, the whole weekend we had, you know? You should. If he wanted to go back home, you should have just let him go home. I didn't want my boyfriend to be mad at me. Why would I assume the worst of intentions? You just, sometimes you got to take the hit, let him be angry, and let it go. He'll get over it when he Instead stops being drunk. Having someone have sex with me when I to? No, you should have just let him go home, let him be angry, let him cool off, wake up probably hung over in the morning, and let him sleep it off. No. But the way she tried to get him to stay sent mixed signals to him in it order for... Mixed. I said I didn't want to have sex, but that I wanted him to stay and, and kiss me. I can't kiss my boyfriend. It, it's not that you did kiss him. It's that you pulled him very close to you, led him to the couch at the same time you were kissing him, and you were leading him on with what you were saying. I can't kiss my boyfriend on a couch. You were being very, very suggestive as to what you were trying to do. You were I trapping him into it. He was kissing her, wanted to have sex with her. She said, no, I'm not interested in that. And then from putting myself in his shoes, she tried to do the same exact thing to him thing to him by saying, but I am interested in this, and started kissing on him hard and pulled him real close. I think I can kind of clarify. I think I can kind of clarify what he was trying to get to. So basically, a guy in that situation, he is, especially when drunk and when with his girlfriend, like when drunk, drunk and when with his girlfriend. No. How no, many beers I mean, did you have? Like, like a drink. A drink. The party. Like hours. That is, that is drunk enough to impair the thinking and at least just enough. Can, it can be. It can be depending on your tolerance. Some people have really low tolerance and one drink can throw them way off. And three hours ago? But let me get to my point, please. I'm not a child. 
Can I get to my point, please? My point is a guy in that situation is thinking more with the lower head than the upper head, especially when he starts getting signals like she's sitting with her legs in his lap and pulling him close and kissing him the way she did. Why are you leaving? Does it not matter to you? Yes. Yeah. If you get mixed signals as a guy in that position, it is very hard to think correctly. You had something you wanted to say. Okay, whoever is talking over there, no means no. It doesn't matter what she did to her boyfriend, no means no, period. So let me go off the let me go off this mixed signals thing. Tom, did you feel like you were getting mixed signals? Uh yeah, I, I honestly felt like I was getting So did mixed you feel signals. confused about what she wanted? Yeah. Why didn't you ask? You can't just ask. I mean, I, mean, I feel like it ruins the mood sometimes. It, Can yeah. you ask? So to go off what you were saying, if, you, if you're getting mixed signals, why not ask? saying that because it makes it better because I was sitting with the Nicole, with my boyfriend on a couch. Nicole, I got one thing to say to you. Men, they think with their penis when they get drunk like that. <laughs> so, instead of getting all touchy a little bit, kind of, I'm not saying you can't make out, but making out too much can be kind of a risk. So I can't make out with my boyfriend? I'm not saying this, just not too yeah, much. That's what you're saying. Not too much. That Don't get all saying. huggy wuggy and. Okay, but. Again, this is something I'm hearing a lot. This is something I'm hearing a lot in here. There's what I call the magic butt. So uh, you, you were saying it, and people down there were saying it. It's, it's the. No, it's not her fault, but it is her fault. So as soon as you used that but, as soon as you said you can make out, but you're saying it's her fault. Well, I want you guys to have a good time. I do, both of you, but like going too far, going past the limit, and especially when you said no, I don't want to have sex. When you're with a significant other that you care about, what is that limit? I mean, is there a limit? Is there a line to cross? I mean, when you have clearly stated, this is not what I want, but this is what I want? I mean, we had sex last weekend. Does that mean he gets to have sex with me always? Yeah. <laughs> So, like, earlier she said that, like, they always have sex, but this time she just wanted to watch a movie. So, like, why do you think you should always have sex with her? Like, can't you just, like, watch a movie? Like, what she wanted? That's what she wanted. Three up here. Tom, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, whenever you're invited over to your girlfriend's house, do you is there like a part of you that feels like you're entitled to having sex with her when because she's your girlfriend and you're at her apartment alone? No. I... We've only been dating a couple of weeks. I mean, like we've only had sex one other time. I mean. But I mean, I said I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. And do you feel like if you get mixed signals, you should just keep going? Is that okay with you?
All right. I, I, I overheard this, and I can't let it go. So you said smack them both. <laughs> why, why smack them both? What did you say? I asked, I asked who initiated it, the sex. You guys said I had sex. I mean, I'm more the, like, who was the aggressor? sort of person, I guess. Who, who was the aggressor the first time you guys had sex? What do you mean aggressor? She... No, no, this time she was being the aggressor on kissing him. She wanted to leave. Can you speak she into the mic, please? The aggressor. She was being the aggressor on kissing him and making him stay. He wanted to leave again. She was being the aggressor on kissing him again and making him want to stay. They got on the couch or whatever that is, and she wrapped herself around him. Her legs were wrapped around his lap. I can't have my legs on my boyfriend. She pulled I can't him in. Kiss my boyfriend. She pulled him in and Help then me. started kissing on him. Why and was said, I, I supposed want to this. do it differently? So basically, my question is who was the aggressor? Why does that matter? The first time. Why does that matter? What does that have to do with him having sex with Because me? obviously, the first time he didn't rape you. Correct? Right, because I said yes. So. If you were the aggressor this time, and he thinks then that was how it was the first time, it's going to be the same. But I said, I don't want to have sex every time we're together. No, I don't want to have sex this time. Well, let me ask you, did it seem like the same as last time? Uh, it, yeah, it seemed okay, like Okay, so last, last time. time, did she push you away? No. Last time, did she move her hands off of you? No. Last time did she say, let's watch uh, Gilmore Girls? No. Last time did she say, let's watch a movie? No. So it wasn't really like the last time. Regardless of who was the initiator, it wasn't like the last time because she pushed him off and said, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Clearly enough. Uh, are you going to tell anybody what happened? I don't know. Like you all said, like. I gave him a bunch of mixed signals. I mean, who's going to believe that my boyfriend did? Like, who's going to believe me? I don't even know where I would go. I don't want all my sexual history all over campus. And I don't even know who I would, who I would talk to. Can someone in here tell me if she wants to tell somebody where she can go on this campus? Anybody have an answer to that? Any staff member on campus, a resident assistant, <laughs> Sandy Lillehaugen. Sandy Lillehaugen, um, Bridget Graywater. Um, but yeah, and like you said. Like, Bridget Graywater. Bridget Graywater is the counselor on campus, and she would be confident. Tom, has anything like this ever happened to you before? Has it? All right, thank you. Where, who? Yeah. All right, so with this scene, I always like to be absolutely and unequivocally clear. Uh, what this was, was rape. Regardless of who initiated, regardless of, you know, whatever, the minute she said, let's watch Gilmore Girls, I'm not in the mood for that, let's watch a movie, can't we be close? The minute she pushed him away, took his hand and moved it off of her. The minute she did any of those things, and he continued, it became rape, it became assault. This scene is, to me, one of the most fascinating of all the scenes we do, and we do a lot more scenes than what you saw tonight. This scene is the most precisely choreographed. 
So not just what they do, but how they do it is very precise, intentionally so. So she gives in this scene, I know because I wrote it, I've counted, she gives in this scene twice as many refusal signals as she does consent signals. Twice as many, both verbal and physical. And yet, what I see often, and what many of you in the audience here did, is people give more weight to the yeses than the noes, to the consent signals than the refusal signal. Why is that? When the refusal signals are quantitatively far more prevalent than the, than the consent. Why? Why do we do that? They didn't want to hear a no. So we hear what we want to hear. We pay attention to what we want. Um, I want to throw out just a couple of uh, statistics out there. So President Obama did a survey, a study of sex, uh, sexual assault on campuses. And in that study, it indicated that uh, one in six college women will experience attempted or completed sexual assault before they leave campus. Uh, and the majority of those <clears throat> happen in the first couple of months of the first year. That's a really risky time for women on campus. Um, there was another survey in which something like 16% of the men admitted to behavior that would meet a legal definition for rape. Now, I used to believe that they admitted that maybe because we kind of have a victim-blaming culture, and maybe they didn't know what they were admitting to. I don't know. Uh, but that same survey indicated that the majority of sexual assaults are committed by serial perpetrators. So if a person has committed sexual assault, they probably have done before or will do again. One of the things that we hear a lot with this is, why is it that we have only shown men as the perpetrator? It's a valid question. Absolutely a valid question. And a couple things in regard to that, I want to stress, men get sexually assaulted as well. Sometimes by women, that does happen. But most of the time, it's by other heterosexual men. Uh, that same presidential survey indicated that 6% of college men will experience completed or attempted sexual assault before they leave school. 6%. So it's a huge thing, and, and the reporting rate with men is even lower than it is with women because there's a big stigma around it. So I want to be absolutely clear. Men get sexually assaulted. It does happen. But there is a simple reason that what we show is men primarily being the perpetrators. And the reason is that the vast majority of sexual assaults, and I don't mean like 52%, I mean more like 90-something percent, of sexual assault are men assaulting women. And like I said, even when we're talking about men getting assaulted, it's mostly men who are doing the assaulting. So that's why we do that. I can't ignore that. Um, so with that in mind, I wanna issue a challenge. Because men, it's primarily us doing this, it has to lie primarily with us to do something about it. And I put this on me too. We have to take care of this. We have to do something about this. We can't put this all on women. We have to hold each other to a higher standard. We have to not turn our backs when our friends do things that we find objectionable. We have to take care of this. I also want to be clear that it's not all men. I mean, that's a hashtag that is really annoying, but the vast majority of men in here are perfectly good guys. They're not going to do this. There's another statistic floating around. It's like something like 8% of men commit 90% of sexual assault. So it's a small number. Like I said, mostly serial perpetrators. So I want to be absolutely clear about that too. Not everybody. It's a very small minority. But it still is on us to police that minority. We have to do something about that. So we started this show with a big question, and that was, what do you want? I'm going to come back to that now and ask you again to take that question seriously because you really do have agency. You really are the now. You really are the deciders at this point. You really can shape the world you want. So 
think about everything we've talked about here. And you guys have been great, by the way. Think about everything we've talked about here and reconsider. What kind of world do you want? What kind of campus do you want this to be? How do you want to treat people? How do you want people to treat you? You really do have the power to shape the world. Take it. Let me introduce the actors again for who they really are. This is Sulia, Peyton, and Paul. And just to be absolutely clear, they are none of the people you saw them be. Uh, once again, my name is Michael. We are GTC Dramatic Dialogues. I want to thank you all for coming here and helping us create this show. Uh, go out and keep talking to each other. Don't let this stop here. Thank you. We'll hang out up here. If anyone wants to come up and chat with us, please do.